Good morning. We decided again to squeeze you all in here, so it's a kind of more comfortable speaking only in one direction. And I was a little bit surprised being in a slot where the talk is something about spirituality. So I'm not going to talk much about spirituality today. I'm sorry, that was yesterday. But there's a connection in my topic too to that. So, ah, I need... Thanks. So, I got a very wide kind of scope and topic for what I'm researching in because I'm looking how can we set up a culture of sustainability and how do eco-villages, which kind of attempts are they doing for setting up a culture of sustainability? And so this is broad and wide and I'm not going to be able to tell you everything, I'm sorry, but let's go. First. Look at that term, culture of, trans of sustainability. How clever is that? I mean, we are mixing up two terms, culture and sustainability. Both of them are kind of vague. And so I was looking for, is there anything helpful out there? People talking about a culture of sustainability, and there's not so much. There are some people talking about, we need a fourth pillar beside economy, ecology, and environment. Oh, no environment, economy, and the social, and there needs to be the culture pillar too. But beside of that, because I'm looking for something which is the container for how do we get all those three pillars together in our daily social life. And so there's one guy, and I think he's somewhere around here too, it's Oliver Parodi, and he was saying in theory, a culture of sustainability is, in my opinion, the result of the concept of sustainability and in practice, the true implementation of sustainable development. A collectively born, mutually understood and understandable sustainability, which is institutionalized and internalized and is passed on through conventions, patterns, habit, and even feelings. So I was using a kind of a working definition. And so I'm um, kind of term culture of sustainability um, as a collectively realized way of living sustainably on all levels. So bringing together the environment, social, and economic pillars. And it's referring to a societal reality that it's a kind of dynamically reinforcing itself. So that, for example, you don't have to get up in the morning and saying, oh, this day I want to live greener and develop my personality. I'm going to be nicer to my neighbor. It's just kind of... It's not so much voluntary anymore. It's more kind of the way we live. And so it's a kind of like Robert Gilman was talking about that domain stuff. So how do we create a domain that's a kind of affecting people to live more sustainable? And on the same way, how do people affect that domain? So, and then I was interested in why could equal just be a really, really interesting topic to do research in. And you all know eco village definitions. That's the classical Robert Gilman one. And I'm just showing you that again to see how interesting eco villages can be for that topic. There's another one you may be not so familiar with from uh, one of the former Chen presidents. Eco villages can be linked to yogurt culture, small, dense, and rich concentrations of activity whose aim is to transform the nature of that which surrounds them. And then something more uh, just recently put on the Chen website. And I'm just showing you that eco villages can be or have the potential to be very, very interesting for uh, yeah, looking how can we transform society and how can a culture of sustainability evolve in that. And then, I don't know, is X curse working in English? Can we say I'm making an X curse to somewhere else? Is that a term? Excursion. It's what? Excursion. Excursion. So let's go on an excursion. Transition made in Germany. I just want to share you with that because it's very amazing. In Germany, there's a scientific advisory board for government. And they, every two years, they're making a flagship report. And the last one was really called a social contract for sustainability. And in German, it's even more exciting because it's called the Great Transformation. So they are talking about we need a Great Transformation for society. And there are two key players in that. And one are the pioneers of change. And pioneers of change are groups of people who do something different than the mainstream. And they are saying, now, science, the 
science has to do something. It has a kind of foster that those pioneers of change coming out of their, oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Coming out from their niche in uh, society and bringing in their wisdom and their experience in the wider, broader social context. So that's a kind of really exciting right now. So because government and I would say science political world is asking for knowledge which could be found in eco villages. So that's the I was looking for how a kind of get some orientation in which ways we can take uh, towards a transition. And I was using a, um, hoppa. So, I'm using um, the integral model of Wilbur just for getting some poles of orientations and just saying like this traditional, people saying, oh, we need to change something in our inner reality. We need to have personal development, we need to have a new worldview and things like that. Or people saying no, like uh, communism did and Marxism saying like no, it's the other reality that kind of affects us the way we are. And then people are saying you have to start with your own and others one saying like no, we need, the, the society as a whole needs to change. And coming out from that you can look for different dimensions and things in that to look for, okay, what can we do there? What efforts are made? What attempts are already existing? And then again, you can see ecologists are very interesting for that because they're bigger than one individual, but they are not as big as whole society. And they focus both on inner reality and personal development as well as the outer reality of building, of how do we produce food and things like that. So, and there are lots of them out there. So that, that's just a map uh, from North America and Europe. So the question was, okay, where to go? And so I made up some criteria where I'm going to and just want to name you some. So, for example, it needs to exist more than 10 years because I was not so much interested in people telling me, oh, we are going to do this and read our mission and vision paper. It needs to be more than 50 people and no specific spiritual affirmation or uh, something like that. So, and if you put those criteria, there are not so many communities left in the world. So those were uh, the ones I selected and where I went to. <laughs> Doing some field research and wherever it was possible, we were cycling down uh, the east coast in, uh, of the US. So wherever it was possible, uh, I went with a bicycle and then went to the Equalage Seam Linden, which is very famous uh, for that store wall buildings. Then Equalage at Ithaca, which is well known for its densely clustered two neighborhoods. Then one of the still lasting hippie back to the land uh, communes, uh, Twin Oaks in Virginia, still making hammocks. Then Earth Haven Eco Village in North Carolina, which is literally put in the forest. And so it's a kind of weird because they have to cut down the forest for building up an eco village, but also building nice houses. So I had like tons of data. I made like 60 or 70 interviews and participated a lot. And so the question is what to do with that. And so I had some foci in my research. And first one was, I was interested really in the design and management of that transition. So what do they do equally? Just what they are trying to set up, which methods, which uh, way of govern themselves, which uh, methods of resolving social conflicts and things like that. And the second one was, uh, I was interested in how does that affect the individual? So how do we get to some which is called valances? So I can give you an example, like, for example, I could be playing football here or soccer. That's possible, but I'm not going to do that because the domain here is I'm standing here and talking to you. And otherwise, on a soccer ground, somebody's telling me, don't play football here because it's too loud for the neighbors or it's not good for the grass. It's not a good way uh, to deal with that. So it has much to do with the domain we are in. 
So, and so I was looking for how do ecologists design a culture of sustainability and what are commonalities and differences between uh, the selected ecologists. And then for today, most important, is there anything we can transfer to wider social contexts of, of those things I found there? So, that's just pictures of, uh, of uh, what I was talking about, how does the setting influence the experience and the behavior of the individual. And that, that's because I'm doing my PhD in psychology, so there needs to be something that's uh, uh, psychology inside. And so, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that much today. So, but that's what I found, and I'm going to show you some pictures. So I was looking for what are the elements of that transition. What do they actually do and how can I organize that? And I was coming to one part is social structures and the way we live together. I mean, everybody knows that in communities, that this is of high importance and everybody's looking for something that create really, really deep interpersonal connections. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, that's funny, because that's the one year marriage in Damanhur, so they have something where they only make a marriage for one year, and then looking again, oh, are we gonna do that again, and why we are doing this, and let's make us a program, and so. So there's a lot of things uh, and uh, diversity in, in that field. And you can, they are trying to do it sometimes by architecture. So that's what they did in Ecologia Lithaca. So for example, the houses are constructed that the kitchen is always facing uh, public space and the living rooms are going to the back. So somehow that when you're cooking, you can see other people and go out and bump into them and they call it interaction by design. Or you can do some kind of social design if you have people eating together, if you have events and rituals and also social techniques like forum or nonviolent communication or nowadays the Scott Packs community building. We have that realm of technical material with sometimes the question if it's successful or not. So this is substituting a washing machine with a bicycle is never used. But uh, maybe a good idea. And the most point with the, with the technical applications is the participation of the inhabitants. And so it's seldom high tech. So ecologists are not the place where like, the high end technology is normally uh, evolved and then brought out in the world. It's more how can we interact with the people and people really using that and accepting the technology and understanding the technology. Then we have, uh, and that's nice because all these realms are kind of interacting. So by working and constructing, there's also a social aspect. People love, work together, it's fun. Then we have art and aesthetics. So just to make things beautiful, to make it, yeah, to, to reach people in a way that is beyond that cognitive, we, sustainability is something you have to suffer and you have to do this and here, it needs to be a kind of attractive and bringing in art, and here also, that's uh, Nicole Siem Linden, uh, you can do that, you can make constructions which are very aesthetic at the same time. Then we have values and norms, which uh, already Kat Kincaid from Twin Oaks said in 1974, that's norms are the biggest power source in a community, but in fact, nobody knows exactly how to establish norms. And that's, that's a quote from an interview where a person is saying, if I would ever start an equilibrium, that's the question I'm, I'm re asking all the people in the interviews, what are we gonna go different if you start a new equilibrium? And so he was saying, if I would ever start an equilibrium, I would start around the campfire. And I would start some kind of process where we as a group make a creation story together and make it in a way that it was infinitely amendable. So when new members come, they could kind of add on, and we kind of created our own cultural story as we went. The stories would be the missing piece. We do have knowledge, we have the science, we have the technology to make a sustainable world. What we don't have is a coherent vision that allows people to work in unison. And to have a coherent vision, you have to have a coherent understanding of the world. To have a coherent understanding of the world, you have to have a coherent story. So that's where I would start. Which I like the picture, just starting a community around the campfire, keep on talking, talking, talking. So then you have education and knowledge, 
which is also include the integration and the way people socialize themselves in the community. So every community has there some kind of program for getting new members in, for making seminars, for teaching them. That's the way how we live here. That's the way we, that's the rules, that's the norms, that things like that. Then we have institutional and political. That is the famous ONI board in <laughs> Twin Oaks. So that deals with the whole realm of governance, of decision making, of which organizations do we have, and things like that. And then we have processes in there, which I'm not going to name here, because I want to show you something different coming out from that. Is, uh, OK, I jumped one, but it doesn't matter. I can show you that first. Um, that's, that was the question, how does that affect the individual and how do the individual affect actually uh, the domain it is in, the setting? And all the interests are showing that people reporting that they really have like a good development in terms of well-being, like how do I feel, uh, what are, are my needs met, how do I know what I want, how do I communicate that? And they have more sense of self-efficacy, so which means they can more participate in the surrounding, in the way their community is, in the way um, yeah, everything is taking place, coming from the designing process of the community up to social things. They feel more responsible. And one thing everybody's saying, like the personal development is one of the most important factors. Like, we had that yesterday here, like people bouncing together like stones and getting and being washed round and round and round in in, uh, in a little river, and so that's one thing everybody's reporting and the sense of connection. So, and this is something that is coming everywhere, and I felt like this is and that's all the the part where it's getting a little bit back in spirituality, because that connection is taking place on three levels. So it's first the connection to yourself, like who am I, what are my needs, what do I want, how do I feel like, what's my inner truth, and so on. The connection to other people, because you're so close to them, you know so much about them, you work together with them, things like that. And the connection to the environment, like that was Jan yesterday telling that story about sitting at his table and he knows where the axes are from, where the table is from. He knows everything. So he's got a good connection to the environment around him. And something that is beyond us. So that could be the community. That could be the mission of the community. But it also could be, for some people, God or uh, the nature of nature or whatever. And that's something that's really essential for that. People feeling more connected. And so that's a way to look at all the things we can do and all the designing process, how do we come to that point to create more connection for everybody? So, and then I was looking for how can we transform all that stuff I found there. And I'm sorry that I'm not going to tell you stories about all that communities I would love to, but there's no time for that now. So I was looking like, OK, if we want to set up a culture of sustainability, it has to fulfill two things. And and first one is human needs. We need to fulfill human needs and system requirements for sustainability. And I'm going to fill that with some content. Here, here we go. So we have on the outer side, that's the requirement. As a system, we need to be sustainable in environment, in the social realm, and in ecology. I know this is economy. And here inside, that are human needs. And one that is really interesting here, that's this layer of implementation. So what can we do for that? How can we connect human needs with system requirements? And those were all the realms I was showing you right now before. And so the fun thing about that is that all the three layers can be turned around. So they are flexible. And so that you can start to talk about, OK, let's see. Let's see we talk about. Uh, connection, we have uh, social structures and living together, and it should be somewhere in the realm of environment. And then you can start, okay, what can we do? Are there already existing things? And the one I was showing you, the answer could be, for example, a community, because it's fulfilling uh, 
per person's need for connection. It's, it's a way of uh, structure the way we live together, and it's very uh, good in terms of uh, your ecological footprint. So that's just one example where we're trying to use it and say, okay, that, that's a way how we can design for a culture of sustainability. So, and now, I want to make a little conclusion. Ecologists ask cradles for transformation. I would say yes, but to really fulfill and evaluate their potential, more research is needed. <laughs> so this is going to be a kind of a campaign now. Therefore, contribute to the state of the art, help new transdisciplinary studios on, uh, studies on the way, and inform yourself. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we did a kind of a database where we're trying to put all the studies that are existing about ecovillages and bring them in here. And the output is a kind of just a map of the world where you can zoom into and see, ah, there are 14, for example, up here there are two communities where there has been studies, and then you can go there and click there and see this is, for example, the equivalent. You can see here there has been so many studies there. Then you can check them and abstract and blah, 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 and you can search for uh, certain keywords and people. So, and I would like to ask you to if, check this out, look, and if you know about any studies which are not included there, send it to us or put, f fill out uh, all that stuff so that it's getting more and kind of spread the message in communities or in the academic world and join the network, because that's what we are trying to do, is really foster uh, this huge world of theory, people in science and politics looking for what can we do, and on the other side, all these pioneers of change like ecovillages are, and there's not so much good working connection right now, and so kind of our mission is, yeah, to make that better, and so I'm just wanna kind of push you, join in the network, bringing in what you know, your ideas and persons you know. Thank you, Felix. And uh, yeah. I wish you good luck with your dissertation. I think you have a lot of material right there to I work do. with. And I would like to open the floor for some questions for Felix before we continue to our next um, speaker. Anybody? Can we start here and then we come down here? Sure. Uh, Felix, that website, is that like open source? Can anyone, like, does it work like Wikipedia that anyone can edit or do we have to go through an editor? You mean for the database? Well, right now it's working in a better version, which means uh, not everything is functioning very well. But it's, it's thought to work like Wikipedia. So, you can fill it out and that's already working. You can register, you need to register, but that's just your name and where you are from and your email address, and then you can use it. And then it's up to you also to put in new studies. And right now we have a system where this abstract of new studies needs to be approved. So there are some people just looking that not somebody else is creating bullshit, but that's it mainly. So just scan through, is that all right? Is that existing? And then put it in. And after a while, we would like to yeah, invite more people uh, going to that improvement level so that it's not going to be just the two or three of us, but more people. So kind of a system like Wikipedia, yes? It is on. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased to hear that you're putting together this uh, database of, of research projects because at Gen, for some time now, we've been discussing how we could get someone to do this. Which now I'm understanding that you actually have started it. Because uh, I think it's a necessary part of the whole evolution of the eco-village movement that, uh, that the academics get linked into the people who are actually working on the ground. And um, we were actually were thinking already last year about whether we should try to start an academic journal. And uh, I, I would think, think this is the first step towards that kind of a journal. I, I don't know if you thought about that, but once you have a group of academic people who are in contact with each other, this might be a natural uh, next step. So I'm very pleased to hear that with, about your work. Thank you very much. 
Okay, could, could we pass the microphone back? Um, Royston Flute, I, I'm very interested in the notion of self-sustainability as opposed to sustainability, which you're starting to touch on by only looking at communities that have been going for more than 10 years. Um, there's a huge body of knowledge around sort of um, communities which are established almost ad, rather than being intentional, unintentional. Hmm. So particularly the UNHCR has a huge body of knowledge around refugees and how people actually cope, how they survive in communities. So Jeff Crisp there is the head of research at UNHCR. We're looking at literally thousands and thousands of people. Wow. Um, I think maybe we can learn something from that experience. Mm -hmm. um, also, in terms of self-sustainability, we, we feel that... Uh, I, I'm not sure we've actually finally got to a conceptual model that's universal. No, normally, when you're doing these things, um, you have to try and find a mechanism that can link practitioners, academics, and policy makers. You have mm -hmm. to complete that circle, otherwise nothing really happens, yeah? Mm -hmm. So our view is that you have to find, try and discover a conceptual framework that really um, knowledge engineers what ha has actually happened in the real world and puts it in, into a framework that can then be tested via you know, the sort of classic scientific model of the empirical and the conceptual. Mm -hmm. Have you any thoughts on that? I mean, you're making up a big scope. You're right. It's it's not, it's not that only the communities I was researching in them are interesting for that topic. It's way more. That has just been the one I was focusing on, and so that's true. And for sure, yeah. If if you really want to make a transformation, you need to get somehow in contact uh, with people from the government, with people from science, and also from uh, from. Uh, businesses and things like that, yeah. And so that's, that's one thing we are trying. And so this year, in, but it's going to be in Germany, and so we are not very, very making uh, much announcement for that here, is really bringing those people together. Because coming out from that flagship report, it's really a lot of things are happening in Germany. And so now we are trying to bring people from, from the state, uh, which are in charge for uh, funding programs together with uh, people from academia and pioneers of change. So that's, that's a kind of a way where we're trying to put them together and maybe we're coming somewhere where it's more a collaboration. So it's not so much people only talking in their role saying like, oh, that's me and that's you and we could never come together, but just come together and see like, okay, what can we both do for that transformation? So that, that's a way how we trying to kind of making a container where that could happen. Okay. We have one more question back here, and then we have to move on to... Oh, okay. Uh, Felix, uh, this is perhaps a bit tangential, but I heard you say you're a student of psychology. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could say something about the psychology of individuals who choose to join eco-villages, and also any impressions around the social psychology of groups that you have met? Mm -hmm. I particularly ask because groups actually, I think, very soon develop shadow sides. Pardon? The last part I didn't uh, get. I think groups actually have this, it's a double-edged sword. They can very easily fall into shadows and blind spots. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to hear your impressions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. That's, and a lot of studies dealing with that, what are the motivations of people going in communities? So they can find a little bit about... Uh, I would say the individual part of who is going there, what are their reasons, why are they joining there. And for sure, as I said, like a community is, is, could be really a challenge for people going there. So it could be good for them, for some it doesn't work and they have to drop out again. But um, it's really challenging you and you're out of your comfort zone and looking how can you deal with other persons and here and there. And so for sure there are a lot of communities where you, you were talking about shadows. So it's there in every community. And so I think to really accurately answer your question, we have to look for specific cases. And I can tell you what I feel is the problem there, what I have found there. But for sure, every community has to deal with that. And also with that balance between the individual and the collective and how is that working. Okay, Felix, one more question, yes. very short answer. Well, it's, it's almost just a comment. Uh, since this is a research meeting, 
I think that the research method of universities need to be dealt with uh, and that we should give it a special uh, attention in the future because what I hear from from all the meetings I've been in, that the research model that's been used does not fit what I think is necessary mm -hmm. for uh, dealing with ecovillages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Um, but the good message is it's changing a little bit. As, as, I, I mean, I know it mostly in Germany, but there it's changing. They're talking of transdisciplinarity, and this is kind of amazing because that means that you're working together with the people from the ecovillage. And that's something which has not happened so much at that point. And many ecologists, I feel like, oh, we don't want to have more of those students passing by, having their interviews, da -li -da -li -da, and then coming up with a thesis, and what the heck should we do with that? And so it's changing a little bit. But yeah, you're right, we need... There are many dimensions of that. I just think that I would uh, ask Ixa to take that up as a theme, because I think it's a major important thing in order for this to work in the future. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Another round of applause for Felix.